Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today, we're making and pairing a fish sandwich with a cactus icy from Nope. If you haven't seen Nope, it's a 2022 Jordan Peele film that is still playing in some theaters and is also available to rent and watch at home on demand. And because of that, I won't be doing a typical summary as to avoid any spoilers. But what I can say is that in one scene, we see an icy machine, which features a somewhat unusual cactus flavor. Additionally, there's another scene where our heroes eat a fried fish sandwich at a fictional fast food restaurant called Copper Pots Cove, whose food can also be spotted in Peel's sophomore feature, 2019's Us, with Copper Pot being a reference to the character of Chester Copper Pot, whose grave was infamously defiled by the Goonies. But before we get to our fish sandwich, we're first gonna make a cactus syrup for our cactus icy, which starts with cactus, of course, also known as nopal, and the nopales I bought came with their needles trimmed off. But if you need to take them off yourself, simply use the flat side of a knife. Next, we're gonna cut our nopales into smaller slices like so, and add them to a pot, after which we'll next add the fruit of the cactus, which is also called tuna. Tuna? Are you kidding me? Or more commonly known as prickly pear, which comes in a red, or in my case, green variety. And what we want from this tuna is actually what's inside of them, this seedy, pulpy middle section, which will add natural sweetness to the more vegetal nopales. So so we'll scoop out the innards of four tuna fruit into our pot, after which we'll add four cups of sugar, followed by three cups of water, as well as the juice of two limes. We're also gonna add a bit of salt, and then we're gonna stir this together and bring it to a boil, after which we'll reduce the heat and allow this syrup to simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. Towards the end, we'll grab a potato masher and mash up the nopales and tuna to fully extract their juices. Then we're gonna strain our syrup into a bowl, mashing up the cactus more to get all of that flavor Flavor, and now we're gonna allow this to cool, but while we do, we're also gonna add some green food coloring. You should probably add yellow dye here as well, but we'll get to that later. Then, into these Grolsch beer bottles I like to save for syrups, we're going to funnel and strain our syrup, this time using cheesecloth to get any of those remaining seeds out, ultimately leaving us with roughly 24 ounces of cactus syrup that will chill in the fridge while we start our fish sandwich, the first component of which is an onion jam, one element mentioned in an LA Times article my dad sent me about the creation of the fish sandwich in this movie, which was the brainchild of chef Gilberto Satina, whose restaurant Whole Box in Los Angeles was a frequented eatery of the production team on Nope, so much so that Satina was recruited by Peel to create three different fish sandwiches for the film, ultimately serving the final one to the entire cast and crew. Bailey and I were lucky to visit Whole Box and try a couple of their outstanding fish tacos, which I ended up using for inspiration, so we're gonna make our onion jam very much the same way we did our bacon jam in our steak sandwich episode you can watch here. But unfortunately, we won't be using any bacon. We will be using bacon fat though. Why? Because... Bacon is good for me! So we'll add the bacon grease to the pot, but that's not the only fat we'll add because we're additionally gonna add around a tablespoon of olive oil. And what would an onion jam be without onions, of course? In this case, one large red onion cut into strips, and while they cook down, we're also gonna add a bit of salt to help those onions break down, so we'll simply cook these onions down for a bit, and once the onions have cooked down more, we're then going to deglaze the pot with a little Marsala wine, after which we're gonna additionally add some malt vinegar, an absolutely classic pairing with fried fish, but that's not the only vinegar we're gonna add because we're also gonna add some red wine vinegar, followed by a bit of soy sauce, after which we'll add some Worcestershire sauce. Then we're gonna go ahead and stir that in, before then adding some dry thyme, some freshly cracked pepper in addition to a little cayenne pepper, and last but certainly not least, some brown sugar. Then we'll mix that in, and like we did with our bacon jam, we now want to cook this down until it becomes nice and jammy, along the way adding any additional seasoning if necessary, as well as a tablespoon of butter. Then after a little while longer, our onion jam will be further cooked down, and our jam will be looking supremely jammy, at which point we will now add the final ingredient and the the third vinegar of this jam, balsamic vinegar, which will add a little sweetness and richness. We will then transfer our finished onion jam to a bowl, and we will cover it and set it aside in a fridge or at 
at room temp while we work on the star of the show, the fish. Inside of this bag is a whole kampachi, also known as amberjack, or more commonly, yellowtail, most often used for sushi or sashimi. But it is also one of the fish used in Holbox's fish tacos, and the fish that Satina landed on for his final fish sandwich. Because this fish was whole, I had to break it down. But, to be honest, I've never butchered a whole fish before, as evidenced by my noticeable hesitation. That said, through some extensive research on this website, I found out that the first thing I needed to do was scale and gut the fish. But first, I used kitchen shears to cut off these exterior fins to make it easier to work with, after which I took the fish to the sink to remove the scales. To scale it, I used the back of an everyday kitchen knife, and under cold water and rubbed the knife along the fish to remove the scales, which, to be honest, I did a very poor job of, but more on that later. At any rate, after scaling the fish, the next step is to gut it. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Which starts by making an incision at the base of the fish's pelvic bone, slice the fish open like so, then once you can get your hand inside, we want to pull out all of these guts and these innards that are in here, which is admittedly a very gruesome process. We then want to rinse the fish and its insides in the sink under as cold of water as possible. We will now remove the head and collar of the kanpachi. I did this by starting to cut from the bottom, but to be honest with you, I feel like I totally butchered this process, pun very much intended, due to the fact that I thought my knife wasn't nearly sharp enough. Because while I did extensively sharpen my knife before working with the fish, I don't think I sharpened it nearly enough for this process. Once you remove the fish's head, you can also remove the back of the head, referred to as the collar, which contains some great meat. But we're not going to be working with the kanpachi collar today, so we're just going to move along. And rinse this fish under cold water once again. The next step will be separating the fillets and ribs of the fish from the spine. Starting at the back by the tail, and using the fish's spine as a guide, we want to slice along the kanpachi laterally like so. Then we're simply going to flip this fish over and do the same technique to the other side, leaving us with two large fillets and ribs, as well as this fish spine, which you can use to make a delicious fish stock or dashi. But for now, I'm just going to rinse the fish under cold water one more time and pat it dry, because we now have the tall task of removing the skin, which I found to be the most difficult part of the process. Quite honestly, I don't feel qualified to really teach this, so check out this fantastic tutorial about removing fish skin here. What I do know is that you'll also need to remove this middle part of the fish called the bloodline, just like we did in our last video you can watch here. Additionally, we want to detach this second fillet from these ribs here, which is surprisingly pretty easy, after which we'll remove the rest of this bloodline. And what I can also say, and can't stress enough, is how important it is to have a sharp knife here. You'll also want to make sure that you have a fillet knife, also known as a boning knife, Boning. which I ended up buying mid-breakdown of this kanpachi in an attempt to make the skinning part easier. But alas, I still struggled mightily to remove the skin. I also realize now that I should have spent a lot more time scaling the fish at the beginning, because now these excess scales were getting all over our kitchen. At any rate, however sloppy the rest of this process was, I was eventually able to end up with four clean fish fillets separated from any bones and skin, which we'll now go ahead and fry up after we trim them into more sandwich appropriate shapes. To fry our fish, we're going to need a small to medium Dutch oven, as well as both a candy thermometer in addition to this tool called a spider to remove our fish from the oil. We're also going to need the dry mix of our batter, which has been chilling in the freezer, and to make this dry mix, all we need is one cup of self-rising flour. But if you're like me and don't have any self-rising flour, that's okay because all self-rising flour is, is one cup of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and and half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix this all together, creating self-rising flour, to which we'll then add two tablespoons of rice flour, as well as an additional quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And as previously mentioned, I then froze this mix until I was ready to finish the batter. But before we do, we're going to fill our Dutch oven with a mix of Crisco, as well as vegetable oil, which we're going to heat to exactly 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And while it does, we're going to add liquid to our batter, 10 to 12 ounces of a 
lager or pilsner beer. I'm using the classic Mexican beer, Victoria, which has a beautiful golden color, and we're gonna mix that beer into our dry ingredients, ultimately aiming for a sort of runny pancake batter consistency. And if it's too thick, we'll simply add more beer. Then, once the consistency is perfect, we're going to keep our batter cool in the fridge, and while we do, we're gonna do some last-minute trimming of our canpachi to get these fillets into a more sandwichy shape, reserving these smaller pieces, which we can then make into little fish sticks. And once we trim up our fish, we're going to grab another platter, into which we'll add two more tablespoons of rice flour, in addition to a little bit of salt, maybe a teaspoon or two. Then we're going to mix this together, before we dredge each piece of fish into this rice flour mix. And meanwhile, I began toasting our bun in a 350 degree oven. Specifically, the aforementioned LA Times article stated that for the actual movie sandwich, they used a brioche bun from LA-based bakery Rock and Wagner Bakery. So I went to Rock and Wagner and picked up some of their brioche bun buns for this episode. Now it's time to fry our fish, so we're going to grab our chilled batter and one by one we will dip our dredged kampachi into the batter, shaking off any excess liquid before then gently placing it in the 375 degree oil, and this fish really won't take long to fry. Kampachi is a very delicate fish, so we don't want to overcook it, so flip the filet over a couple times until it reaches a beautiful golden brown, and once it has we will remove the fish from the oil and place our fried fish onto a wire rack to cool, then we'll simply repeat this process with our other pieces of fish, and while we do, I'll mention that this fried fish and batter recipe comes from the OG YouTube chef himself, Chef John, whose video and channel you can check out here for all of his amazing recipes. So we'll continue frying our fish until all our kampachi fillets are beautifully fried, along with our little fish sticks, and once our fish is fried and our buns are nice and toasty, now we're ready to head on over to plate, and to plate our fish sandwich, we're going to do so on this yellow sheet of deli paper, onto which we'll place our toasted bun, and onto that bottom bun we're going to add a few scoops of this luxurious onion jam, making it a nice even layer, but before we plate the rest of our fish sandwich, we're first gonna make our cactus icy, which starts in a blender, to which we'll add ice, and so as to not break Bailey's blender, I put the ice in a Lewis bag and crushed it up with a mallet ahead of time. When I made this, I used 5 cups, but I actually think 4 cups of ice provides a better ratio, after which we're gonna add a couple cups of our nopale syrup. I started with one cup, but added closer to two, so let's say one and a half. Now we're gonna blend this up, after which I added that extra bit of cactus syrup, and at this point I also added a cup of club soda, which I found from various recipes online to be the secret ingredient to making an icy at home, as it gives it that frothiness and body you expect from an authentic slushy. I also added a bit more green food coloring before blending our icy up once again to a point where I finally achieved the texture I was going for, but the color of the icy was looking far too blue and not green enough, a problem that I fixed rather easily by simply adding some yellow food coloring, which quickly got the icy to that electric green color that I had sought after. To plate our icy, we will do so in a genuine icy cup, which I bought at a movie theater, discovering that you don't actually have to pay for a movie to buy snacks from the snack bar. So into our icy cup, we'll pour in our cactus icy. Next, here comes the star of the show, our beautiful fried kampachi, after which we're gonna top that off with some of this cabbage slaw, which is a simple combination of shredded red cabbage, to which we'll add a bit of majorum, an herb that pairs very nicely with seafood, in addition to some chopped cilantro, followed by more malt vinegar, as well as a little bit of mayo. I prefer QP Japanese mayonnaise. Finally, we'll add a little bit of salt, as well as a bit of freshly cracked pepper, and simply mix this slaw together, then we'll put a few healthy scoops of this slaw atop our fish, before then adding some pickled shallots, which I made very simply by combining sliced shallots, along with a little bit of white wine vinegar, the juice of half a lime, followed by a little bit of salt, as well as a little bit of sugar, and last but not least, some crushed red pepper flake. Let it pickle for a few hours, then we're just gonna go ahead and top our sandwich with some of those pickled shallots. To finish this sandwich off, I put a little more Japanese mayo on the top bun, in addition to a little bit of sriracha, which has become very difficult to find the past few months due to a drought-induced shortage of the red jalapeno crop in Mexico. Then after topping our sandwich with our bun, I put a lid on our icy, and then used a funnel in an attempt to give that classic filled to the top icy look. And at long last, our fried fish sandwich with a cactus icy is 
finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. So we'll first take a bite of this beautiful fish sandwich. And honestly, everything about this sandwich is absolutely perfect. That fish is so flaky and tender with such a crunchy, crispy crust, and it goes phenomenally well with that decadent onion jam, the refreshing slaw, and the sharp acidity from those pickled shallots. All brought together by that sriracha mayo, this is really one of the best things we've ever made on this channel. Angel's right, you can never go wrong with a fried fish sandwich. But how does our fish sandwich pair with a cactus icy? Mmm. Oh my god. Man, that is so, so good. It's expectedly sweet, but it's also so fresh and light. The earthiness of the nopales balances beautifully with the sweetness of the tuna and the acid from that lime. And what makes the icy such an excellent pairing with this fish sandwich is that while the sandwich isn't all that heavy, it is still rather rich and fatty, and is wonderfully balanced out by this refreshing, aromatic, somewhat grassy, delicious, slushy. And while I intentionally wanted to make this a non alcoholic drink for this video for authenticity's sake, I will say this Cactus Icy would be even further enhanced with a splash of a nice Reposado tequila. I did this after making the video and it was absolutely spectacular. Five stars, Angel, five stars. So I have to say that this pairing right here is truly out of this world and is most certainly more of a yup than it is a nope and is most definitely worthy of two big thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Please leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in a link in the video description. Once I get around to updating it, of course, follow us on all forms of social media, at Consuming Cinema, and don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from Halloween Kills. And as always, thank you for watching.